Hey guys, how you doing? It's KevTech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Thursday. And today I want to go over my first video on how I, I believe you should get started in IT. Obviously, I'm going to make more videos and add on to this. Um, and let me share my screen with you. And this is only for Discord, by the way. If you're in Discord, you get to see this. If you're not in Discord, you won't see this. I'm putting the video on Discord only. This will not be on YouTube, by the way. And I want to add on to it, like what, what you should start, how you should get started, what certifications, what skills you should learn. Um, I will go over uh, what are the key keywords you should be putting on your resume, um, going over your resume skills, like what you should be focusing on for tech skills, soft skills, and a few other things as well. Some things that will help you out and make you stand out as a help desk person because 2020 is quite, quite difficult because of the hiring process and things. You need to learn more than just resetting a password. So we, I have to make you better than that. So this is my first video and let me share my screen with you and, and we're gonna go over a couple of things, okay? Give me a second. So screen one and let me open my PowerPoint. So help desk, how to get started. So how did I get started? That's just like, that's the interesting question because people are gonna, some people ask me that are on Discord, they're probably not part of my YouTube channel. So I, I need to go over this. So, I have restaurant experience. Uh, I worked in for the NYPD. Um, I also worked in a few other jobs like scrap and metal. Uh, I worked in retail and a few other places. And I started my first job in IT as uh, the Department of Education. I got my A plus, and I didn't know that. I didn't know how difficult it was for me to get my A plus because I was just brand new. I didn't know about A, a plus. I didn't know what a computer was. I didn't know what RAM was. I didn't know what how to change a motherboard. I didn't know anything to do with computer. I just didn't know. I didn't even know Windows 7. I didn't know what, what that was, you know? So it's coming about like 900, 9, 901, 902 certification, if that makes sense for CompTIA. So I, I learned the skills. I got hands-on training and I did what everyone else would tell me in IT. Uh, and that's probably what people, people give you advice on this. Oh, we'll get the A plus and you should be good and then get a job after that. And that's not, that's not true. So I, I'm going to stop sharing for, that's not true. Like I, that, that really messed me up because when I first started IT, I got my A plus and I started applying for a bunch of jobs and no one would hire me. And I, like, why the hell is no one hiring me? You know? And I came to realize that it's not about having the A plus. A plus plays a part of it. Like people will, will, will actually call you or send you an email if you have the A plus, but it's not about the A plus. It's more about your resume. So your resume tells a story about you, rather it's, a good story or a bad story, but you have to have a good story. You have to have a good, a good story in order to sell yourself, if that makes sense. So I, I started applying. I apply like over 200 jobs. I'm applying everywhere. I'm applying like crazy. And, and I'm just like, oh, you just, just get the A plus and apply for jobs. You'll get someone's going to hire you. No, 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 no. No one hired me just because I had the A plus. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, no one was hiring me. So then I, I ended up, I'm like, you know what? Let me take a step back. Um, let me figure out what the hell's going on. Why is this not working for me? So then I ended up making my own lab at home and I installed VirtualBox. Um, you could do VMware, whatever you have. And then I ended up learning server 2012 R2 at that time. And then I started adding these skills, active directory, users and computers, uh, account lockout, resetting passwords, all this good stuff, if that makes sense. And I had that on my resume and, uh, Lo and behold, I, I got my I got my first job in IT because the teacher recommended me, but also because I had a I had I, I, I was getting my I was gonna get my A plus, but also because I learned about Active Directory and like, yeah, we, we like this guy. And we hired so I hired they hired me for the Department of Education. Same thing with the other job, I worked for an MSP environment. They hired me because I had Active Directory users and computers, Active Directory Server 2012 on my resume. As soon as I added that, boom, everyone started to call me. But this was years ago. So now things have changed. So you need to know more now. So obviously I'm going to make you someone that actually is more prepared to actually go for the job interview, more prepared as more than what I was, because I don't want to give you the same, the, the same advice I will, I gave, like that was given to me, you know, like, Oh, we'll get the A plus you should be good. No. So a, a lot of, a lot of issues is that a lot of people get come out of college, they get a degree or you come out from technical training school and they apply for jobs and then no one wants to hire them because they have no experience and, and that's what you get. You get rejected a hundred times. No experience, no experience, no experience, no experience. We can't, sorry, we can't hire you. You'll have no experience. And then you, 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 it becomes a battle with your, with your mental mind. It plays a, it plays a battle in your head because you get so discouraged that you apply everywhere and no one wants to hire you. 
And a lot of it has to do with your resume. So that's the reason why I tell people, go learn Server 2016, go learn Server 2019, go learn Active Directory using the computers, go learn all this other stuff. So I'm going to go over right here. I'm going to go over some of the stuff that you should be, you should kind of know, or probably know if you're applying for a job in Health Desk, but um, it's really important that you fix and tailor that resume to that job that you're applying for. So that's just really, really important. LinkedIn is also important. And also you should be applying to more than one website, not one website only. Go to multiple websites. I'm going to go over that in all my other, in all my videos to come. So don't worry about this. Okay. So um, if you're brand new, having a, you have a degree, you're going to get a job in IT that easily. I'm telling you right now, you need to have some more, you need to have more than a degree. Same with someone that, same with someone that gets the A plus, you need more than the A plus. Um, it just it just doesn't work that way. You need to learn these actual skills by making your own virtual lab at home. And that's really important. So um, what I tell people is uh, go learn the A plus. If you don't want, if you don't have money to buy, buy the A plus, then that's that's totally fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go against you. You know, you have no money. I told you together. Everyone's financial circumstances are different, but I want you to learn Windows 7, Windows 10. Whatever operating systems that they're asking for, I need you to learn Windows 7, Windows 10. Obviously, Windows 10 is more, more dated, more, more up to date. So learn the, learn the operating systems because you need that. If you're trying to apply for a job, they ask for Windows 10 and they ask for like CMD or CMD, the ACP, DNS, they ask for all that good stuff. So you need to know all the command line and stuff like that. So that's really, really important. So let me share my screen with you again. And I have to be, re I have to be re realistic with you as much as possible. You're going to get rejected. 100 times 200 maybe 300 times but as you see as you see that no one's calling you and people are not people are, are calling if people are not calling you it's because your resume if people call you you get to phase one where they actually go to the interview then we know we need to work on your interview skills and then when they ask you the interview questions you could ask them a follow-up asking like what did i do wrong how could i got hired how, how could i have done better what, what answer did, did you did I say that you didn't like from me? You know, things like that. So you need to go over that and figure out what are, what are you doing wrong in the interview if you get an interview. If you get no interviews at all, then it's your resume. So you got to take a step back and look at your resume, if that makes sense. You got to take a step forward if you have the interview skills, interviews already. So if you're, hit, if you're getting the interviews, then we have to take a step back on that again, because then there's something wrong with you, whether it's your soft skills or your technical skills. We need to go, we need to figure out what's going on. So I need you to, if you're weak in soft skills, I need you to go talk to someone. I need you to record yourself when you're interviewing. I need you to get comfortable, get out of your comfort zone and get comfortable with talking to people. If there's a tech skills and you're weak at a certain topic, like AD Active Directory, you need to go over that more. Then you need to have someone actually test you on that. Or you need to take a test on that online if you're not prepared for that. If you want to be more confident at it, you need to make your own little lab and learn about that. So Things like that, if that makes sense. So let me share my screen with you guys and I'll continue to go on with other stuff, okay? So hopefully that makes sense um, to everyone. Um, I I need you to embrace rejection first because the reality of IT is you're gonna get rejected a lot. You're gonna get rejected a lot, a lot, like, like a lot, a crazy amount, but don't be discouraged by IT. It asks for a job experience, you make your own experience. How do you do that? You make your own lab at home. That's how you do that, if that makes sense, okay? So let me go back to the next slide. So understanding hands-on skills. So like I said, I went over this already. You need to have these skills if you're trying to do help desk. I obviously don't need to know everything, but I'm going to go over everything anyway, because I need you to be, I need you to, I need you to actually at least get something from my videos, like at least maybe three or four skills from here. You know, it's kind of hard to know everything, if that makes sense. But I need you to understand some of these things. So I the directory, users and computers, unlocking account, resetting an account adding a person to a group, creating a distribution group, creating a security group. Active Directory also deals with giving someone access to a certain folder, certain group policy things. I'm gonna go over all that, so don't worry about that. Office 365, understanding how to troubleshoot Outlook, Word, Excel. A lot of people in a lot of these environments have a lot of Outlook and Excel issues. You need to know how to troubleshoot that on the entry level, at the entry level, of it, if that makes an entry level of it, I mean, by, by that, I mean, you need to focus on disabling add-ins if you're doing Outlook or Excel. You don't tell a user to just restart the computer. You need to know more than that. You cannot just tell someone to restart a computer every time they, every time they have an IT issue, you tell them to restart their computer. That's not a fix. You need a fix for the actual application itself, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. You need to know what Exchange Server is. 
whether it's creating a mailbox, a distribution group, creating a share mailbox, you need to know when uh, Exchange 365 and the admin level is like licensing. You may have to give a licensing to someone, which I'm going to go over these things. So don't worry about this. Okay. And I'm going to go and obviously I'm going to go over it. So in this other section right here, Windows 7, Windows 7, I just went over this. Go go learn the A plus stuff. If you can't get, if you cannot uh, go watch Professor Messer, I'll tell you, go watch Professor Messer. Okay. He's free. If you cannot, if you cannot get the book, let me know. I give you the book. Okay. I have the book. I'll give it to you. If you cannot get the certification, it's okay. Just learn it. Learn what Windows 7 is or Windows 10. Learn learn the basics of Linux because because the book does cover Linux and Mac. So and it covers mobile devices as well. You need to know these things if you're gonna go for a job in IT. That's why they asked for the A plus because it covers Windows, Mac, Linux, and mobile devices and some networking. So know know what that is. Uh, Server 2012, 2016, 2019. They're all the different numbers. I look at it as a numbers. I don't look at it as whatever. I don't, I don't look at anything else but a number. Oh, 2012, okay, it's an updated version of 2016. Oh, 2019 is, an up, is, 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 a, is a newer version from 2016. You know, I, I, we don't care about that. All I care about for this is Active Directory users and computers, which I'm going to go over in, in the video. So don't worry about that. That's all you care about. You don't care about it because at the end of the day, they all go in the same place, okay? Active Directory users and computers if you're doing help desk. All right, VPN, understand some sort of VPN because people are working from home right now. So you need to know what Cisco AnyConnect is. You might need to know what Okta is. You might need to know what Checkpoint Endpoint is. You need to know some sort of VPN software. And that works together with two-factor authentication, which is right over here. Two-factor authentication where they use dual, they use, they use, um, they use Google, they use Google dual, if that makes sense. They use um, RSA, stuff like that. Uh, you need to know what a ticketing system is. I want to go over this stuff, so don't worry. Spice works server now because the only thing about a ticket that you care about is is um, grabbing the ticket, um, putting it in progress or whatever. Progress means basically you're working on it, and then creating the ticket in progress and closing the ticket. So you have the ticket, you open it, you grab it, you assign it yourself, and then you close it. You put resolve and you put how you fixed it. That's all you care about. That's all you care. You don't care about anything else but that. Okay, so you know how to open and close the ticket. You're good to go after that. Video apps. You need to know about Skype because some companies use Skype for business. Some may use Cisco WebEx. Some may use Teams. Some may use Zoom. Keep in mind that Skype for business does allow you to do screen sharing, and you could actually you could actually share your screen with someone, and then you could actually take control of the screen in Skype for business. Keep in mind that in Zoom you could do that as well, um, in Teams probably as well. So you could do that on all these, some of these applications. So keep in mind that. If you cannot get in with a remote tool, there's always a way to get in on someone's computer. Just remember that. Remote tools, like I said, BombGuard, you may have to do, may have to remote in with BombGuard, you may have to remote in with SSEM. SSEM for help desk, all you care about is remoting in. You don't care about deploying software. Dameware, uh, remoting in, go to assist, Dameware. Dameware, go to assist, you know, just remoting in. Kessler, same thing, just remoting in. TeamViewer, just remoting in. Any desk, any de desk, just remoting in, okay? These are the common misconceptions that we have of IT. I have to go over this as well. You need to be good at math. No, you don't. You don't have to be good at math. Don't worry about that. It's a lifesaver. I'm terrible at math, so don't worry about that. Common misconceptions in programming. Uh, uh, for common misconceptions in IT, sorry. Common misconceptions in IT is that you need to do programming, which you don't. You don't need to do programming. Don't worry about programming. If you're trying to do uh, software developer, then yeah. If you're doing help desk, no. You don't, you need, you need, maybe later on, you need to know about Python and PowerShell. Well, you're not in that level yet. That's for a sysadmin. Um, the other misconception, I'm too old for IT. Kevin, I'm like 40-something. Is it too late for me to start IT? No, it's not. Kevin, I'm 50-something. No, it's not. You're not too old. Stop saying that. I've I seen people that are, are 45, 50 get a management job. I've seen someone become an IT director at the age of 55. Do not put these obstacles in your head. You do that, you're hindering yourself from being successful in life, okay? Whether that's IT or not. So don't put these obstacles in your head. You create your own obstacles by putting all these problems in your head. If you, if you do that, you're never going to be successful in life. So you want to stay positive. You want to stay motivated. And you don't want to create these problems in your head because otherwise you never get anything done. Hopefully that makes sense. You need a college degree. No, you do not need a college degree. At the end of the day, I'm going to go over this right now. At the end of the day, we all, we all get a job in IT. Whether you have a degree or not, there's more than one way to land a job IT. Whether you have A+, 
Brother, you 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 have nothing. So I see people get get a job without having any experience, absolutely nothing. Land a job in IT. We have several people like that. I could bring you someone right now and testimony and tell you that he actually got a job without having anything on his on his like no degree, no search, no experience, and landed a job in IT just by doing labs at home and learning learning real life skills doing a lab at home. So there's more than one way to get a job in IT. Seeing someone get a job with just computer science degree. I seen someone get a job with just having the A plus. So just keep in mind that at the end of the day, we all end up in the same place. It's just that we get there differently, if that makes sense. So, and then the other thing is I want to go over is help desk is keep in mind that you have to know how to deal with people. You have to have patience. You have to have empathy. You have to know how to handle stress. That's the reason why I'm making these videos. Cause if you have improper training prior to coming to a new job, you don't know how to handle, you don't know what to do. So if you watch my videos and you watch other videos from other YouTubers, like, like uh, job Skillshare or any other YouTuber that I have, I post videos all the time. I teach career questions to go over it too, you know, or network Chuck, any of these YouTubers that, you know, whether it's help desk or not, you want to want, you want to follow some YouTubers that, that cover these things, whether it's help desk or not, when there's network admin or cybersecurity or whatever, you want to cover, you want to, you want to go to, you want to be in an environment more prepared than anything. So if you're working a brand new job, I'll give you an example. If you start tomorrow, what is it? Not tomorrow, it's almost Friday. If you start Monday morning, right? And you know in, my, in their job requirements, it says you need to know Active Directory users and computers. What would I advise you? I advise you to go learn that. And then when you come in Monday morning, you're less stressed out and you know how everything works. So that's basically what, that's why I'm making these videos because you're less stressed out about everything that comes across your, your table, if that makes sense, whether it's a help desk ticket or not. Attitude also is important. Important thing in IT is having that positive attitude, not being a know-it-all, no one knows everything, even I don't know anything. And I always tell people like, when you're successful, if you're successful and you're in landing a job or you're successful rather, rather landing a job or something else, let, you know, I, I wanna hear those positive stories from people. If you land a job in IT, let me know. Um, Obviously, I'm here to help you out. I'm, I'm here to uh, help you land that job. That, that's my that's my goal on YouTube and, and Discord. So that's why I'm making these videos, if that makes sense. So that's it. That's pretty much it. Attitude is important. Make sure you, you just like, you know, attitude re reflects leadership. You should be sharing knowledge with people. You should be learning from other people. You should be, you should be making yourself better. But also, it's always good to absorb information from people that are better than you. Because there's always someone out there that's better than you. Just remember that. In IT... There's always someone out there that's better than you. That's just the way life works. There's always gonna be someone that knows more than you. Just like there's always gonna be someone that that may know a certain topic that they, they might be good at, but you might be better at it. You know, so everyone's good. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. We all have our own way of learning, whether it's 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 uh, learning from technical or soft skills. Like I may be I may be good with soft skills. I love soft skills, but someone else might be good with 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 just tech skills. Never really good at the, at that tech skills tech tech skills. Just remember at the end of the day. That if you do help desk or IT support, you're gonna you're gonna be dealing with someone on a phone. Um, you're gonna be dealing with someone on a phone. You're gonna be dealing with them face to face. You're gonna be doing something with a user. So you have to have patience. You have to have empathy. You have to know how to talk to someone. That is really really important in IT. And you'll get far in life, whether it's IT or not. If you go with people, you'll be get you'll get far in life. Why? Because keep in mind that help desk is the first line of support. You are representing the company as a whole you're representing the company. So they're not gonna hire someone that's terrible with customer service or terrible with talking to people. Since why would I hire someone that's terrible at that if they're representing the company? You're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the face of the company. I don't wanna hire someone that's not good with people. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna look bad on my end as a manager, or, you know, having someone represent the company like that. That's just, look, that's just terrible. So keep in mind that help desk is the first line of support and you are really important to the company because you're representing the company. Whether it's on a phone or talking to a user in person, all those things are important. Just remember that. You get far in life with tech skills and you get far in life with dealing with people. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's it. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys uh, find this video um, resourceful. I, I hope I hope it helps you out in some shape or form. Um, you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, you like you like this video, just let me know in general chat because you can't type anything on, on that channel that I'm going to put it at. Just let me know. Hopefully this helps you out some shape before if you're brand new to IT. All right. You guys stay safe. You guys have a great Thursday and take care. Peace. Later.